Today I'm replacing the compressor on this Manitowoc Indigo NXT. I Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you the diagnosis portion of why the compressor is not working, but I'm gonna go through hopefully the full process on how to replace it, starting with recovering the refrigerant. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be connecting my blue hose to the low side, which it's labeled right here, low side, and I'm gonna connect my red hose to the high side, which is right here. I'm going to then route my uh, charging hose, which will be this guy right here, if I can undo it real quick. And I'm gonna connect this to my recovery tank, and then I'm gonna take this blue hose, and I'm gonna run it from the out of the recovery tank, or excuse me, of the recovery machine to my recovery tank. Let me get that all set up for you real quick. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Jeff and you're watching Ice Machine 411. Hit the like button and the subscribe button just to go over what it is that I had told you before. So high side hose, low side hose, both connected. Both of my uh, shutoffs are closed. We got this guy open, this guy open, this guy open, all the way down to the end of my recovery machine then coming out of the recovery machine to this point. This point is still loose because we need to bleed the air out of the lines, out of the recovery machine to that point, and then we'll close that point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open both of these, and that's probably plenty to blow out all the air. Now that that's closed, I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up that will allow all the refrigerant to flow through. Once this stops flowing into my tank, I will energize my recovery machine. It should only take 30 seconds or so. And when the recovery machine gets kicked on, you'll see these pressures drop. So I'm actually gonna close this off a little bit. And actually you can do it here as well. So you don't have all that much refrigerant going into your machine. Sorry, it's gonna get loud. And then you open that. There we go. And then those will start coming down just like I had said before. And when they get to zero, I'll cut off the machine. My pressures are now in the negative range. I cut off my recovery machine. This needs to get closed. And then you can remove this hose, take your tank, set it off to the side with the other pile of stuff, and then leave your manifold connected because we'll use this to flow nitrogen. Now what I'm gonna work on is giving myself access to pull out this compressor I'm going to end up taking off this entire back wall because, get back there and show you what's going on. So my filter dryer is down inside of there. Anytime you open up the system, you have to remove and replace the filter dryer. Easiest way to do it is just take out all these little 5 16 screws and this whole panel will come out of place and you can kind of set it on top out of the way. Take out all these little clips and the washers that come with them take off this cover right here by removing the screw and then you can get access to all of your little uh, wires that go to the compressor get those removed and out of the way and then once you have enough access we'll probably fire up our torches and get to taking these guys out where are we at now took out this whole back panel like I had told you before. Now it's just kind of sitting up here. You don't have to unwire it or take the cord off. Just all the screws folded up top. Took out a bunch of zip ties here. I did take off one of my thermistors that were right here. All of the clips holding the compressor in place are off. So this will just slide straight up. I do need to peel back some of this insulation so I can slide that out of there. So 
next step is I'm going to be firing up my torch set and doing some welding and getting these things all pulled out of here. And yes, flow nitrogen. I have nitrogen going through, going into the high side and coming out this end. So you only need about four or five PSI. That just helps keep the inside of this copper line clean. The uh, extreme heat from welding has a tendency to uh, cause oxidation and soot buildup on the inside of the copper line, and we don't want that inside of our ice machine. It, uh, that debris will end up clogging up TXVs and uh, harvest valves and all that good stuff. My compressor has been desoldered. This is disconnected, as well as this one back here. You just push that out of the way, and then you can just grab your compressor. You probably need two hands to do this, but as you can see, it's nice and loose and ready to come out of there. I'm gonna remove the compressor out of the way. I remove the compressor, get it out of the way, so that I can get nice, clear, clean access to my filter dryer and then we're gonna do the filter dryer. And just like that, we have all the access we need to remove this. A Couple of pro tips before we move on. One being that usually you would want to remove this cap and remove the straighter when welding this. But since this guy is gonna be going in the trash, I don't really care about it. I might do it just because it's a good habit to get into, but if you're putting a new one back in, always take this cap off and always remove the straighter from inside of there. Also, when you remove the compressor, this is an adapter. So if you take this off and leave this part inside the top of the compressor, what you end up getting is a mismatch between this hole and then, uh, or excuse me, the, the copper line on there and this hole, uh, it won't fit in. So if when you unweld it, all I'm really trying to say is when you unweld it, take the adapter out with the copper that's inside the ice machine so that the new adapter will go, or excuse me, so the adapter will go right into your new compressor. And just so you can see, the new filter dryer comes with the straighter core already removed. And then you take off this cap when you're done welding, or see, take this cap off before you weld but then you're gonna install your straighter core into that, uh, into that hole there. And then if anyone's curious about part numbers for the filter dryer, there's your part number. And then for the compressor, <clears throat> there's your part number. And they have this in stock at the parts house. So uh, we were able to get the compressor and the filter dryer uh, and a one day turnaround to get this ice machine fixed, which is pretty impressive. Just like that, new filter dryer has been installed. I did change the angle of where the straighter port is. It was pointing that way, but I have it pointing this way. It'll make it easier for me to charge the machine up later. You can get a good look at what those welds look like. Nice and solid all the way around. Nothing, uh, you know, concerning, no holes, no gaps that need to get filled in. Now I'm going to throw my compressor up there in place, line up these pieces of copper and get that guy welded in. That way we can throw this thing into a vacuum as fast as we can. Quick tip so I don't do this to myself again. On one of my previous videos, when I pulled these plugs off of the top of the compressor, what had happened was oil had freaking shot up all over the place. So I'm gonna try it like this and hopefully if well hopefully no oil shoots up but if it does hopefully it'll get caught by this rag so that one didn't look like it had any oil shooting up out of it let's see what this guy looks like come on a little bit of air but no all right we're clear all right let me throw this up there super important tip make sure you put the new rubber boots in if there's too much vibration it can be really annoying noise wise. And then they can also cause damage to the machine because instead of the, instead of the vibration being absorbed by the little rubber boots, the whole machines uh, vibrating ridiculously. And then the compressors 
vibrating unnecessarily. So just make sure these boots get put on. It's very important. You don't want to get to the point where you've welded these things together and then you have to deal with putting the boots on. It's uh, very hard to do. One other thing before I weld this together, it's much easier to kind of bend these copper lines or not bend them, but manipulate them to the point where they want to stay over the top of where they're going into. That way when you heat them up, let's see if I can show you this one. This one wants to pull down basically to the exact spot. So even though this doesn't want to suck in there all the way because of the leftover copper resi residue, as soon as I heat this up, that's going to go it's going to suck right down inside there. And then I just finish the weld and then you're done. Same thing for this one. Now that my compressor is welded in, you can get a good look at what these welds look like. I have to swap my high side hose from the front of the machine after I put my Schrader into here, my Schrader core, and I'm gonna connect my high side hose to this side and pull my vacuum here. The reason why I'm gonna do that is because when we recharge, we wanna recharge the liquid refrigerant into the condenser, not in through the front of the machine because these type of compressors and the refrigerant, there's a specific reason why, uh, mainly to protect the compressor from getting hit with liquid refrigerant. We wanna charge liquid through the filter dryer. That's the reason why these ones have ports on them where a lot of the other filter dryers don't have ports. I'm going to be putting this Schrader in there using this Schrader tool. It literally says Schrader on it and it has a, oh, what do you call it? It has a automatic torque on it. So you can't over tighten it or accidentally leave it too tight. I wish it was magnetic, but I'll leave a link to this particular tool in the description below the video. They're available on Amazon. They're only like 13 bucks. And then you see it has that click so you won't ever over tighten it. All set up to run my vacuum. Got my micron gauge hooked up to this port here. Low side hose connected to the low side port in the front. High side hose connected to the filter dryer in the back. And then have my vacuum hose running down to the vacuum. All of these are fully open and all of these are fully open. So those are open, that's open. And now all I gotta do is click this on. And then this number will start to pull down. And then we're gonna wait till this number says 500 and then we'll go to recharging the machine. So we got down below 500 on our microns. We're actually at 380. It's kind of jumping around between 380, 390 and 400. Everything is all put back together. I also went ahead and changed out my contactor because the old one was pitted. What I'm gonna do, um, unfortunately, they temporarily put in a different ice machine that required a 208 plug. And now they're gonna have to have somebody come back and fix that. So I'm gonna use an extension cord, plug in my ice machine, get it all set up to, to charge and then show you what that looks like when I get to that point. A little bit of a tip for you. Warming up the refrigerant bottle with some hot water goes a long way to helping get the charge into the machine. Otherwise, you're only gonna be able to get part of it in and then you'll have to turn on the machine and meter it in through the suction side. But uh, heat this bottle up, hot water, maybe five minutes. Make sure this nozzle gets cleaned off really well so there's not any water inside of it because you don't want to get moisture into your refrigeration system but uh uh this tip right here has saved me a lot of time so here's the plan the valve on the tank is open this one's closed this one's closed uh for right now uh, and then my suction side and my vacuum side is uh they're both closed so this guy's open that guy's open uh, this is open, it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's open or closed. I'm gonna wanna see what my pressures are when I turn the machine on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this guy open and then we're looking for 19 ounces of 410. So let's see if we can see that real quick. Yeah, 410, 19 ounces. So that's one pound and four ounces, excuse me, one pound, three ounces. 
Make sure this is zeroed out. What we got going on? It just keeps on jumping up a little bit, but let's go zero. All right, and now when I cut this open, it should just start flowing and that should jump up pretty fast. One pound, three ounces, and then we close it. Just like that. A little bit, little bit more, but we're gonna lose, it, lose some when we take off our gauges, but let's just call that good. Now we need to run our extension cord because like I said earlier, that plug's all messed up. Run the cord to test the machine, see how it works. Like I said before, we are going to turn this on and I know this looks a little weird, but we have to test the machine. And uh, when I leave, I'm going to take my extension cord with me, I'll leave the machine unplugged and let the customer uh, call back out whoever did that and fix it. Compressor just started, maybe. Nope, something's not right. Something's not right. All right, let's try again. I may have miswired it last time. All right, so I, I got my start and my run backwards. I took a picture of the last one and matched it up off the picture, but I think that this one is different than the, the old one. So uh, my pressures are kind of doing what they're supposed to be doing right now. That's eventually gonna start pulling down the machine's gonna start making ice. Uh, this line, as well as this line, still has liquid in it. So later on in the process, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut off this valve here, the shutoff valve on my refrigerant hose, and then I'm gonna slowly open up my suction side and let the refrigerant come out of this line and out of this line, and then cut this guy off right here, and then I'll go ahead and remove my refrigerant gauges and let this thing make ice, but I'm gonna keep an eye on the pressures for right now and just see how they work and what the, uh, what the cycle time is and all that good stuff. So we cycled into harvest just a couple minutes ago, actually, excuse me, less than a minute ago, like 45 seconds, 50 seconds ago. Ice is sliding forward, it's about to drop off. Let's see, go, 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 go. It's a little slow. <laughs> But there you go. I, my pressures all look good. I put my back panel back on. All my wires are back to where they're supposed to be. That's tucked away. Uh, everything looks good. All done with that compressor replacement job for the Manitowoc Indigo NXT ice machine. Everything went really smooth. There was a little bit of a hiccup at the end where I wired the new compressor the same way the old compressor was wired. but ended up being backwards. I just had my my run and my start uh, reversed, but uh, I knew something was wrong right away when the compressor didn't start. So I just verified using the wiring diagram, uh, swapped the two wires and then restarted the machine and everything worked really, really well. I hope that you found this video helpful. Sometimes doing a compressor job can be tricky, especially if you've never done it before. If you've done it a couple of times, I'm sure you just breezed right through it, but being able to see the step-by-step -step procedure of you know, recovering and little tricks to try to make your life easier can be beneficial. So like I said, I, I really hope that somebody got some value out of this. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, uh, drop a comment, say, you know, what it is. If there's something that I missed, like I did something stupid, like, you know, messing up my wiring, uh, drop a comment as well. Let me know. Uh, I'm trying to get better as well. So if there's like little tips and tricks that you want to pass on, I would appreciate that. And we'll see you on the next video.